divers, and I promised you we would go over the surface air consumption rate and respiratory minute volume calculations. Um, this can come in really handy when you're trying to calculate how much gas you're going to need to be able to do a dive. Uh, one of the most beneficial dives that I've seen this come into play with most recreational divers is that Megalodon two fledge that we do because we're maintaining a steady depth for the entire time. And most people are not going to get the benefits of nitrox without using a higher volume tank than they're used to, like an aluminum 80. So um, this is really simple to do. It's full of math, though, so I don't want it to intimidate you. Once you get it, the formulas down, it's not really that difficult. I'm going to link a Divers Alert Network link uh, onto this video that explains it even further if you want. But if you follow along with what we do here, it should be fairly easy. So the first part of this is you actually have to go do a dive. Um, and to do that dive, you want to pick an area where you have some sort of bottom reference that you can maintain a um, steady depth for a 10-minute swim. So we want to pick a depth, and we want to be able to swim for 10 minutes at that depth, keeping it as close to that depth as we can. So you don't want many changes in your depth because that can mess up the calculations a little bit uh, for 10 minutes. And so for simplicity, we're going to use, uh, you start at 3,000 PSI, and you're going down to 33 feet. And then so at, once you hit 33 feet, you, what you want to do is start a timer for 10 minutes, and you want to record your starting PSI. So we recorded it, it's 3,000 PSI. We're going to swim along, maintaining as close as we can to 33 feet for 10 minutes. Once you hit that 10-minute mark, you're going to record your ending PSI. In this, this case, we're going to use 2,400 for the example, which means that we use 600 PSI for that 10 minute swim at depth. Now, we take the 600 PSI and we divide that by 10 because we swam for 10 minutes and we end up with 60 PSI per minute is what we were using at 33 feet. Now it would be so simple to say, hey, we use 60 PSI, but that's at 33 feet. So to bring it back up to the surface and get a surface air consumption rate, we have to do a little bit of math. And so we have to break down our depth into atmospheres. And if you remember, 33 feet is an atmosphere. That's why we use that for this example. It makes the math fairly easy. But uh, with calculators, you could do any depth. Uh, so we were at 33 feet. We're going to divide it by 33, which is an atmosphere. And then we're going to add 1 onto that for the surface. So we have, we're at 33 feet for the dive. We divide it by 33. That equals one and then we add one for the surface atmosphere which brings us to two atmospheres worth of pressure so at this point what you need to do is just divide the 60 psi by two and that equals 30 psi per minute is your surface air consumption rate so after we get to this point what we need to do to be able to accurately give us a uh, sac rate or a respiratory minute volume to use at depth, that's the important number that we want to get to, is how much cubic feet of air you breathe. We've broken it down to PSI, but PSI changes from tank to tank in volume. So PSI equals volume, and if you have an aluminum 80 tank, you know, one PSI is going to be completely different from a steel 120 tank at one PSI or a low pressure steel tank at one PSI. The volume is completely different. I don't want this to confuse you, but uh, we're going to work through it and I'll show you how easy it is. Step in calculating what we need to get out of this is going to be your respiratory minute volume. To get that, we need to find out what tank you were using while you were doing your surface air consumption swim. For simplicity, and because it's the most common tank out there, we're going to use an aluminum 80 cubic foot tank. So we need two pieces. If you're not using aluminum 80, I'm going to walk you through that too. So the two pieces of information you need off of the tank is going to be the cubic feet of the tank. So in this case, we're using an 80 cubic foot tank. And then the working pressure or the fill pressure of the tank as well. After you get those two pieces of information, you want to pull up a calculator and divide the cubic foot volume of the tank by the PSI of the tank. And that's going to give us a cubic foot per PSI number, which is this 0 0.026. Is cubic foot 
per PSI. So for an aluminum, aluminum 80 tank, every PSI equals 0 0.026 cubic feet. Since we already know how many PSI we use at the surface, we can then do some simple math here and do 30 PSI per minute is what we use times a 0 0.026. And what we end up with that is 0.78. So your respiratory minute volume at the surface is 0 0.78. Now a good rule of thumb to do here, even though you got some pretty exact numbers, we want to err on the side of caution. And so in this case, this is based on volume. So 0 0.78 is actually the cubic feet per minute you breathe at the surface. And so to give us some conservatism and some extra padding there, a lot of people, and it's good practice to just round that up to the next whole number. So 0 0.8 would be a good way to do that. And so, now you know that your respiratory minute volume is 0.8. You can then easily calculate how much gas you use per minute down at depth. All we have to do is figure out the atmospheres that we're gonna be diving at. So for instance, the Megalodon ledge is 100 feet deep. We divide that by 33, which is one atmosphere, and then we need to add one atmosphere for the surface because we're only taking the water out with the 33. Don't forget this surface atmosphere. That's an important one. So what we end up with uh, that, if you want to do the exact numbers, here's 100 divided by 33, 3.03 plus 1 ends up being 4.03 atmospheres at 100 feet. And then what we can do is take our 0.8 cubic feet per minute we breathe at the surface and then multiply that by the 4.03 atmospheres, and we find out that we have 3.22 cubic feet per minute of gas usage at 100 feet. When we were talking about earlier planning out these dives, and so if you do a little bit of math here, you take, uh, let's see, 3.2 cubic feet per minute, and we're going to take an aluminum 80. So we have 80 cubic feet in the tank. We're going to divide that by 3.22. You would have roughly 24 minutes before you would be using the capacity of that tank. And so what you want to do is you want to make sure 24 minutes, we talked about earlier with 32% nitrox, is right at your NDL. So to maximize your time, you would have zero reserve if you used an aluminum 80 with 32% in this uh, respiratory minute volume. Aluminum 80 at 100 feet and then using 77 cubic feet of that is not leaving you anything for reserve. So if you wanted to get that full 24 minutes out, you really need to have a larger tank. Um, in this case, I mean a steel 100, you could take a steel 100 and take the 77 cubic feet off of that. And um, it's gonna leave you with 13, or sorry, 23 um, cubic feet left. And we could do the math and figure out what that equates to in PSI. It's not going to be much. So a 120 would be your best bet. Uh, a steel 120 is 120 cubic feet minus the 77 we use. You still have 43 cubic feet of air uh, or gas to make sure that you, if you run into any issues, whether it's an out-of-air buddy or you take a little bit longer than you planned at depth, you still have plenty of air, plenty of gas to get back up on the boat. So I hope this doesn't confuse you too much. Um, once you do it a few times, it's really not that hard um, to, to figure out. Something else, uh, another little tidbit that I'm going to share with you is how to calculate how many cubic feet you have based on a certain fill. So we go back to the tank math on this, and uh, it's, this one's a super easy one. So if you had a, let's say an aluminum 80, uh, 3,000 PSI rated, I'm going to do the same math we just did a second ago. So you're going to do the 80 divided by 3,000 equals 0 0.026 cubic feet per PSI. Now let's say that you got that tank and let's just go with underfilled. So it was underfilled. To, it only had 2,800 PSI. Well, this one's really easy. You just take the 0 0.026 and divide, or I'm sorry, multiply that by 2,800 PSI. 
and that'll give you the cubic feet that you actually have in the tank based on the PSI. So you would only have 74 cubic feet in that tank. Or it's just as simple to do if you have an overfill. So divided by 3,000 again, same math at the beginning. And let's say it was 3,200 PSI. You would do times 3,200. And now you can say I have actually 85 cubic feet of gas in that tank. So that's super easy to figure out the exact volume based on the actual fill pressure of the tank. And that can help you out with some planning as well. Hopefully this has not been too overwhelming. It takes a few times running through the math to figure it out, uh, to be able to do it from head from your head. But uh, it's really fairly simple if you just wrap your head around getting it down. And then, um, yeah, from there we can do some fairly uh, good planning based on known dive depths, um, mix, your uh, no decompression limits, all the stuff that we talked about earlier. I hope somebody got something out of this, and if you have any questions, obviously, please feel free to reach out, and I'd be happy to help you with them.